Good morning again, everyone. So we had the pleasure of meeting Mayor Muriel Bowser. And Mayor Bowser, prior to your arrival, they got an opportunity to meet your photojournalist. Okay. Uh, and so we had an opportunity to share a little bit about what we do in our careers. And this is a day for us to have discussion about preparing for the future and career day. And so okay. I shared a little bit about my role as chancellor and how I support the 116 schools in DC public schools. And this is a group of fifth graders and I share with them that at one point I was also a fifth grade teacher uh, and what it takes to prepare themselves for a career and how I prepared myself for my career. And we share with them now that they're getting ready to go to middle school, it's never too early to start thinking about a career. And so we share that our goal for them in middle school is to think a little bit more and explore some career options of what they might want to become as an adult. And right beside you, on your left, you have a male, for example. So a male is a fifth grader here at Cleveland Elementary School, and he is thinking about culinary arts. He's thinking about becoming a chef. And so we got opportunity to meet a lot of students in the room and what their career aspirations are. Okay, very good. Yeah? Thank you, Chancellor. You're welcome. Yes. Chance already has the mic, so I'm going to take this one. Yes, sir. What college did you go to? Did you have scholarships or use government loans? Well, that's a great question. So the question was, what college did I go to? So first of all, um, I'm born and raised in Washington, D.C., like many of you. Uh, I didn't grow up too far from here. Uh, and I decided that I wanted to go to college out of the city. Now, we have great colleges in the city, so some of you may thinking about go to college right in Washington, D.C., but I wanted to go to college. I want to experience another city. So I went to college, a college called Chatham College in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, which is about four and a half hours from here. Uh, I did have a scholarship, a partial scholarship, a merit scholarship, and that means I got really good grades when I was in high school. Um, and so I got um, half of my tuition paid by the scholarship, and my parents paid the other half of my tuition, which means at the end of four years, I was really lucky. I didn't owe anybody any money because I worked hard to get a scholarship and my parents made a lot of sacrifices um, so I could go to college. Uh, and then I uh, went to another college, and you probably have learned about this, graduate school. Um, some people go to graduate school and get doctorates like um, Dr. Farabee. Uh, so there are other kinds of doctors who are medical doctors, that people go to graduate school to become lawyers. And some people go to graduate school because they figured out what they want to do in life. Like maybe you kind of knew when you went to your first four years, but um, in, if you go on to graduate school, you may want to specialize in something. And so I went to American University right here in Washington, D.C., and I studied public policy there. Um, what is the most difficult decision that you've ever made as a mayor? Oh, there are lots of tough decisions. And I know, did you already ask the chancellor? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. good. <laughs> um, and one of the big, the biggest and hardest decisions affecting you guys was, and you have lived through, and you probably, when you get older, you're going to have lots of stories to tell about living through a pandemic and doing at-home learning. That was one of the toughest decisions I had to make because I had to make sure I was doing the right things to keep us safe and healthy, um, but also knowing that you guys need to be at school. You need to be in your classrooms, your libraries, you need to be with your teachers, and you need to be with your friends. So that was one of the toughest things that I had to do. Yes. Um, can I do my question now? My question is, who was your favorite teacher and how did he or she make you feel like you matter? Oh, that's a great question. So who was my favorite uh, teacher and how did they make me feel like I mattered? 
I have, um, I frequently point to two women. Um, one taught me in second grade. Her name was Sister Mary McGreevy. Uh, and one taught me in ninth grade. Her name was Patty Parakini. Uh, and I remember both of them so well because um, sis, in second grade, you all are beyond this, but I really figured out um, that I loved school. I love doing my times tables. I love learning to write. But most importantly, I loved like being good at it. So I learned kind of how to work hard at school uh, in the second grade. And I and um, but I also had fun at school. So that was that was fun. Um, and in the ninth grade, now you all are going to middle school, so you can start thinking about this. But Patty Parakini taught me how to write. And um, I think that one of the most important jobs that I have, and no matter what you decide to study, learn how to write well. Um, a big part of my job and the skills that I use every day are writing well, speaking well, and persuading others. Uh, and those are skills that I hope your teachers, I know your teachers are working with you on. Learn how to write well. The other thing that I do, because the chancellor and I, uh, we have a lot of people that come and want to work for us, right? And one of the biggest things that I look for, and I know he looks for, because teachers have got to have these skills, um, is being able to present your ideas and persuade others uh, in advance um, whatever it is you're trying to accomplish, because that's what we do in government. Inspired you to become a mayor? What inspired me to be mayor? Um, as I mentioned, this is my hometown. I love it. Who thinks DC is the best city in the world? Hey, everybody raise your hand. Right? So um, if you are interested in making neighborhoods better, changing outcomes for people, creating opportunities, making schools great, having wonderful parks, um, being a steward of the environment, all of those things that you, you get to do by working in government. Uh, and you get to do them the fastest for the most people when you're mayor. So that's why I ran for mayor. Yes. Well, what a great question. Um, so I think that, and the chancellor will say more about um, the impact of dual languages because he knows how he knows how to talk about it from an academic point of view. From my point of view, I think that we are better global citizens when we speak more than one language. Uh, and so I want to emphasize that to you guys because you're really at an age where you can take advantage of it uh, and keep it. Unlike me, who took languages, but I didn't keep my languages. And so I think we now have better strategies to do that. So when I, um, we didn't have, I didn't have language when I was in elementary school. So this is great that Cleveland offers and exposes you to additional languages. Um, when you're in elementary school. I didn't take a language till I was in high school and I took French. When I got to college, I took Spanish. Uh, and I also took advantage of um, school programs that allowed me to travel around the world. And so I want you all to think about that too. When you get an opportunity, if there is an ability to go travel someplace um, with school or with some other group that you're in, um, please take advantage of it. Now, we also live in Washington, D.C. So you can actually travel around the world in Washington, D.C. by going to embassies uh, from around the world. And there's a program you can tell your parents about called Passport D.C that allows you to go um, to different em embassies and learn different cultures. Now, I would also say um, that I'm, I'm hopeful that my daughter will have an experience that I didn't have because she's been learning to speak Spanish since she was born. Uh, and I'm going to do all that I can so that she can keep her language and not, not lose it as she gets older. What do you wait? What do you recommend students our age do this summer? 
Ooh, Ooh. good Reed. one. Read. Read. Cancel, go ahead. The chancellor's going to take this one. Yes, yeah, so the most important thing I want you to remember for the summer is all the learning that you do here in school every day doesn't stop when summer begins. And so I want you to continue to ensure that you are reading because it is the best thing you can do to build your vocabulary, build your fluency, and to ensure that you're understanding what you're reading. And as Mayor Bowser pointed out, it allows you to be a better communicator because the more you read, the better you increase your writing skills and your ability to communicate in writing or verbally when you are trying to convince people or share ideas. And so we want you to continue to read. The other thing I want you to do is make sure you have some fun, you get some rest as well, but take care of your mind and your body. Because when you come back to school, we want you to be refreshed and ready to learn. But be sure you read a lot. I like to amplify the chancellor's comments. But you know what other thing you have to do? You have to get from in front of the TV. What? Yes. I can play PS5. You can, but you just play it a little bit. Because if you're just watching TV or just playing video games, then you're probably not reading, right? So let's just, th you know what we do at my house? We do an agenda. So your teachers, when you're at school, you have your agenda, right? You know what you're doing every 45 minutes. So make a plan for the summer. What are you going to do? Talk to your folks, talk to your family. Like if you're not going, um, if you're not going out that day and you're planning to be home, make an agenda. I'm going to get up and eat breakfast. Then I'm going to read. Then I'll play a little game. Then I'm going to, guess what? I'm going to go outside. <laughs> and we'll play some more. And then I'm going to go, then I'm going to go and talk to my friends. Do a little bit of that. So make a plan. Uh, for for how you want um, to spend the summer and here's another good thing you guys are fifth grade you're going to sixth grade yeah. you know what else you have to do this summer make good decisions you can do that but even then you have to make good decisions so like you have friends Make sure you're making good friends that support you and are kind and are doing the right things, right? Be kind to another friend who maybe needs a friend, right? Listen to your folks. Do what they ask you to do. That's, that's, those are making good decisions. You guys, we're all, you know, you're getting to an age where the decisions that you make affect the rest of your lives. So make good decisions. Yep. I have, I have a question about sign language. So I do a little bit of sign language. Um, but do you have a sign language class or like art class that's open like for me? That's a great question. Chancellor, do we have that in D.C. public schools? Not at this age level, but it is it's a great question. Thank you for raising that. Yeah, we have had to think about how we start at an early age. Okay. Yeah. So we do have, because um, some families, they need um, sign language services. So we have a few programs at early stages that families who need um, those services are matched. Uh, but I love that question. And we recently created an office for the deaf, um, deafblind, and hard of hearing communities. Uh, and we're proud in DC to be home to the Gallaudet University, uh, with the premier college for uh, people who are deaf. So let's see if there's some partnerships that we can think about. I like that. Why are you taking okay. sign language, honey? What interested you? Okay. I, I do art. So, okay. Um, it affects my life, like the drawing, the abstract, the body movement. I do a lot of stuff in my life. Okay. So you'd like to express yourself in a lot of different ways. 
I um I they think that yeah it well. could. <laughs> where do, where are my signers? Okay, you see yeah. these young folks over here. So what we do for all mayoral events is we have sign language interpreters, and on our TV station, Channel 16, you can see us and hear us and watch, um, and watch sign language interpretation. I'm on TV. Yep, you will be on Channel 16. Yes. <laughs> hold on, hold on. <laughs> All right, let's give your classmate um, attention, okay? What do you do you are mayor? Uh, that's a million dollar question right there. So first of all, do you know that I've gotten to be mayor for eight years? It's just a long yes. time. And I still have, this is my third term, and I still have almost four years left. What? And so, you know, um, if, if, you know, we do a good job, I could do it another four years or four years after that. But, so your question is a good one. It is our jobs are not permanent jobs. Every four years, we have to go to the voters and ask, hey, how am I doing? Will you vote for me again? Uh, and so what we're focused on right now is getting things done in this four years. When I move on to another career, and I will uh, at some point, I still want to make a big impact on the city and on people's lives um, and, and do it in a way that I'm uh, impacting great numbers of people. Uh, so as soon as I know what's next and when it's next, don't worry, I'm going to tell everybody. Okay. What is the most difficult and easiest part of being a mayor? That's the easiest part. <laughs> well, I think it's, it's easy for me to advocate for D.C. Um, because I know D.C. so well. I know the neighborhoods. I know the things that are our strengths, and I also know the things that are our challenges. So um, because I've been mayor for eight years, it's really easy for me to say, after taking in a lot of information, it, it's, it's become easier for me to make decisions about what I need, what we need to make the city better. The hardest part, um, I think is not being able to say yes to every good idea. So last week, and the chancellor is going to be um, representing DC public schools in front of the DC council. So you know the DC council is our legislative branch. And last week I had to tell them, like, we can't say yes to every idea, even when it's a great idea. And I may think it's a great idea. Uh, because there are limits to what we can do all at once. Um, and so that's what the budget process is. And you, you'll hear your folks talk about it at home. We have this much money, right? And we want to do this many things. That, that's imbalanced, right? So we have to all work together to prioritize using what we have to do the things that are most important to us. Okay. What does your daily schedule look like? Well, it depends. And that's another thing that I love about my job. It's not the same every single day or, or every single week. Um, and so I usually spend my morning getting my daughter off to school and doing some exercise. And then uh, I have meetings all over the phone. And then my first like public event is usually around this time um, where I will be out in the community talking to folks. I'll go back into my office and have meetings. Um, now, one thing that's different about my job than some is it doesn't end at 5 p.m. So then in the evening, I start all over again with a set of events um, in the evening. Then I try to be home um, to make sure I can have um, dinner with my daughter. Sometimes I don't make that, um, but I try to be home to put her to sleep. 
Thank That's you. all the questions. Those were great questions, guys. Thank you. Give yourselves a big round of applause. <laughs> What's that? Okay. I think we got some questions for them, ma'am. Okay. All right, Chancellor, go for it. So we have a little quiz for you because you've been great listeners. And for every question that you answer correctly, we got a little prize for you. But I want to make sure that, as, as the mayor said, we're, we're going to ask you some great questions. And some of these questions are going to be about our city and our mayor. So the first question is somewhat, should be an easy one for you. So I'll start with the easy question. So we have talked about how Mayor Bowser has continued to earn the voters' trust and to be reelected, and we didn't talk about how long those terms are. When the mayor is elected to a term, how many years are in that term? Wow, so many. Why well, don't you like that? I see so many hands. Um, See the, in the back row, I haven't heard from those guys. Stand up, sweetie. Four years. Four, Four years. years. <laughs> all right, the questions are going to get a little bit more challenging now. Uh, if all ears, okay. Now, one of the things that we have been working on and Mayor Bowser has been leading is this idea we call statehood. When Washington, D.C. becomes a state, and it will, yes, it sure will. how many states will be in the United States of America? Oh, I haven't heard from this young man here. Well, maybe that's, that's a possibility. 51. 51. Puerto Rico when we become a state. So Puerto Rico could be 51 and we could be 52. No, we're going to be 51. We're going to be 51. I agree. There's a protector of the United States. Sorry? What do we call the protector of the United States? No, territory could be United States. All right, next question. They're getting more challenging here. So, one area that we're really proud of in Washington, D.C. is our professional sports team. And so as a part of our charades activities, I saw you come out, do a little demonstration of basketball, football. And so D.C. is very fortunate to have a number of professional sports. Can someone name one of those teams in our great city, Washington, D.C.? A team. Lakers. No, in Washington, D.C. Oh, Washington. Washington Wizards. Washington Wizards. I was going to say the Washington Mystics. I was going to say the WNBA team. Now, so last question. So Mayor Bowser mentioned that she graduated from a college here in Washington, D.C., American University. I shared I graduated from a college here in Washington, D.C., George Washington University, but there are others. So anybody know the names? And, and, and for each name you get, we got a prize for you. Any names of other colleges and universities in Washington, D.C.? Howard University. Howard University. University. He said Trinity. Trinity, Trinity Washington. Washington. <laughs> <laughs> my sister went. My sister went there. Oh, Trinity. 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 Trinity.
hard one. I'm gonna give it to you guys. Catholic University. Oh, I think I'm gonna she went. And then she oh, you already said the other one. Okay. Do we, do we get them all? I think we got them all. Okay. We got them all. Give yourself a Thank you, sweetie. Give yourself a big round of applause.